Let's get into Red House by um, Jimi Hendrix. We'll just have you play after me a little bit. Um, I'll start on the note F, sh F sharp. chorus like this. changes we're on B so we're just do something you can be this simple it goes to E even if you're just playing the root or playing the root of the fifth we went back to B go to E so we're marking the form back to B more important that you can mark the form with the F sharp than you can be fancy. E. Now we go to B, then to E, then to B, then to F sharp. You can just keep doing that, or you can play mark the form with the bass line. The easiest way to mark the form of the bass line here, one, three, five, six. One, three, five, six. On E, one, three, five, six. One, three, five, six. Back to B, one, three, five, six. One, three, five, six. F sharp, same thing. So, 
you can do that again. Or we can go to this form. Instead of just playing the, that power, power chord like this, we're going to do 5 to 6 to 5 to 6. Same thing for me. So the E sits, the root stays, but the other note goes from 5 to the 6. So let's uh, let's also mark the chords with arpeggios. So um, also, so the the there's only three chords that we're using in this version. And for anybody, uh, you should have uh, either below or somewhere linked the actual chord progression, right? And um, if you don't, if you can't figure out the chords, which you may not be able to do if you don't know them really well, then what I would do is I would write out each chord as like kind of just on a piece of staff paper. So B7, that's the four notes of B7, but the way I would write it out is what I call extended range first position. So that means these four notes, B, D sharp, F sharp, and A, I'm gonna write out all of those occurrences that happen in first position on my instrument. So in a B7 chord on the violin, the lowest note is actually an A. So I'll write this out. And I just have it. That's my cheat sheet. And I look at it. When I have that, then I can just make fun with, you know, I can have fun with it. So for example, uh, right? So then if you've got those three chords written out and you've got it mapped and you know the form, then you can mark the arpeggios in all those ways to sit at whatever level of comfort you have. So you can play along with me right now. I'm just gonna show you different versions of how you can do that. And then I'm gonna let you take all these three things that we just did, marking the bass line, marking the inner voices, playing the arpeggios, or a fourth thing would be soloing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to do some more of that, all right? So I'm gonna show you the arpeggios now. So it's B7. <laughs> Seven. B. E seven. We also want a voice lead. F sharp. While you're doing that, I'm also going to show you third and seventh. This is another way to play the inner voices. Third and seventh, B7, right? Here we go third and seventh from the E7 chord. Seven F sharp. E seven. And we got B. E. Then B. F sharp. Marking the chord. These are 
called pads, long chord tones with voice leading. So the big secret, and if you, you if you want, you can do all the things that we just talked about, right? Marking the form, caretaking for the harmony, caretaking for the rhythm, right? Like like the the job of the musicians, the job of the rhythm section is to do no harm to the rhythm, do no harm to the harmony, basically, right? To to like know the form. The easiest way to know the form is to be staring at it on a piece of paper in front of you. For, for me, anyway, it is. I'm not saying it's the same for everybody. And again, I'll just repeat this because I think it, it bears repeating um, that a lot of people will say, well, you should learn stuff by ear. And that makes sense on a in an intuitive way. It's like, well, this is this is music from an oral tradition, right? I mean, obviously, this is blues, right? And, and same with fiddle music, right? Well, the thing is, I mean... As a Suzuki player, I actually did start as in oral tradition, but then I learned how to read, <laughs> and like, and reading for me became a a a conduit for me to memorize things easier, and to have like, you know, very quick access to things. So from a standpoint of learning something, I mean, I'm not three years old. I can't ever be three years old again. So think for a lot of people who come through an oral tradition, it begins very young. And it's and it's developed in this very organic way. But for a lot of us, we're trying to maybe, you know, learn new traditions later on. So I feel like this is a way to accelerate that process. You know, are there other ways to learn blues language? Of course. Like you can just you can listen. You know, that's why we were playing doing play along style earlier. It's like listen to these phrases, play these phrases back, like like really absorb these phrases and take whatever you want from them and make it yours. That's an oral way to learn the blues. And I encourage you to do that. Like listen to Jimi Hendrix, listen to Robert Johnson, listen to all the great blues artists out there. Copy them. Copy singers, copy guitar players, copy fiddle players. I mean, Stuff Smith, John Blake Jr., Regina Carter. I mean, there's so many uh you know, John Luke Ponty, I mean, uh, all these folks that you can, you can learn in that way. But for a lot of the people, myself included, and a lot of people that I work with, again, it's an issue of trees and forest. I kind of feel like we want to have a little of both, frankly. So, so some people will say, um, I'll, you know, learn licks. And if you learn a lot of licks, eventually it's like a language. I, I think that there's, there's a lot of use to learning licks. But I also think there's a lot of use to like learning this, these uh, theoretical frameworks that I'm giving you. So pose them back and forth against each other. Now, when you do take a solo, what I want you to listen for this time, and you can play back to me if you want, is I just want you to focus on hearing how clear the rhythmic idea is and how clear the phrase idea is. In other words, it's a short phrase there's an ending with a space, right? Also, the rhythm is clear. Uh, also, if you pay attention to how complex the phrase is, it's not necessarily com com that complex, right? At least on a surface level. On a surface level, it's like I'm playing three notes. It's a three note phrase. Now, of course, there's a lot of nuance in that, um, which, um, but I just want you to pay attention to that. You can play back to me or you can play your own idea. Uh, that's different than what I do, but maybe take something from it, okay? Uh... time.
now is I'm going to give you the, the whole form and you got all those things you can choose from. If you improvise over it, my biggest suggestion and invitation to you, well, first of all, again, is record yourself. But as you improvise over it, just really think about playing clear phrases. So every phrase is separated by a space. I think that this will create a discipline for you that will lead to you being more expressive. When I was the first of those two courses we just did, I really tried to make my phrases not only clear, but also like kind of simplified. Like I took some of the different aspects of expression and rubato out of it because I just wanted you to hear how clear it was. Like, right? Like a phrase like this. Um, right? Like that's a very, that feels very simple. Um, I could eventually make that. But it's basically the same. So I want you to focus on simple phrases. Also, you can play simple phrases, but they can still have like soul. You know what I mean? But until, but before you, I feel like you can inject all this extra stuff into it. I really want you to focus on the simplicity and the clarity of the compositional idea. So it's like, ba, 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 ba. You can use a melodic rhythm like that, and you can just play that same melodic rhythm throughout, but change the notes. Um, or you could think about, I'm going to play a three note phrase, or I'm going to play a long note, or I'm going to play really fast, whatever it is. So I'm going to give it to you now. I'm just going to let the courses go by. I'll do some stuff in the background, but I'm not getting, getting your way. Two and three. You got it. And... an idea that may help you if we think about like the the metric like the rhythmic unit to me the the simplest rhythmic unit to think about reducing it to is da 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 so everything that you play shouldn't like for example you could say you're not gonna play anything faster than that now sometimes I go right, but I would say you should build up to that. What people try to do is they try to play fast, so then they don't play rhythmic. So if you can play rhythmic first of all, then you can start to play fast. So for example, it would look like this. 
Right, so what I'm saying is I'm not playing anything faster than da 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 da. If you if you can play and and the thing is like I mean listen to BB King, I mean BB King he didn't ever need to play anything faster than that, you know. But it was really the like the the clarity and the intention and like the little nuance and the feeling they would put into it, you know. Um, so, but try to go for clarity first. If you can have the discipline to play clear ideas, then you can bring that nuance and that feeling or whatever into it later. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to play again for you some ideas, but I just want you to have that in your mind that that's what we're trying to do. So you can play after me, you can play your own deals, uh, own ideas whatever you want to do. <laughs> a couple courses. Do your thing. Okay, so I'm going to give you two more courses. Now, this time, I want you to go back to what we were talking about with the uh, free improvisation earlier, right? Like, look, like think about those checklists, right? We've got technique checklists, feelings checklists, and then we've got the elements of music. Those are the three categories. So you get to, you can, if you want, you can draw from that. You can draw from different, um, all those things. It can be one parameter or it can be multiple parameters. Like, I'm going to play... Uh, fast notes, happy, <laughs> you know, I'm going to play pizzicato, double stops, um, with short phrases, whatever it is. You can start to experiment with, with that if you want, or you can stay focused on what we were just talking about, which is having the discipline of playing really clear rhythmic phrases and staying within the changes, the chords, right? Expressing the harmony, or you can just still just be comping. You can just be playing inner voices or playing bass lines. Okay, so I'll give you a couple more courses and then we'll move on. Two and three, you got it. Mm.
Yes. That's what I'm talking about.